A zoner is an archetype in fighting games that relies on long-range tools to fight from distance. These tools often take the form of projectiles. Zoners can be extremely frustrating to deal with since their fighting style seemingly gives them the advantage to deal damage from afar without the risk of taking any. But despite the appearances, the zoning playstyle is not as easy to master as it looks. There are multiple characters in KOF who specialize in this area and we're going to count 10 of them who prove to be exceptionally aggravating to fight. Only one rule to follow in this list, bosses are not included. Most of them have overpowered fireballs that just make them unfair to compare to other regular characters. Without further ado, here's the top 10 most annoying zoners in KOF. Who said that the only way to be a good zoner is to rely on projectiles? The Hizoko assassin Dulan is here to prove otherwise. Indeed, Dulan's fireball is not the best in the series. It's pretty slow and doesn't reach full screen. However, it lasts for a long time, meaning Dulan is free to move while the projectile is still active. Couple that with his natural speed and the ability to teleport and you got the recipe of a fearsome rush character who is very hard to keep up with and follow his movements. But wait, I thought this video was about zoners, not rush characters, is probably what you're thinking now. Dulon's zoning playstyle comes from his stretchable limbs. His arm can be long enough to poke you from mid-range with a command as simple as 6A, and his feet can magically disappear underground and reappear pretty much anywhere in the stage to attack you. He can bully you to no end without using any fireballs. In this regard, Dulon is very comparable to Dalsim, only a lot faster and with hair. I know, you're probably thinking that I just broke one of the rules by putting Rugal in this list. To which my reply is, I'm not talking about his boss iteration. The number 9 spot is reserved to KWF 15's Rugal. I personally wasn't expecting that the latest version of Rogal Bernstein, the series iconic villain, to be an effective zoner. He always had multiple types of fireballs in the past, true, but he could hardly be considered as a zoner. In 15 though, things have changed. In addition of his ground-based projectile, Repuken, which he always had since he copied it from Geese, Rugal has gained the use of a new type of fireball, a laser beam that can be shot from his cybernetic eye. Taking into consideration Rugal's big stature, the violent ray, that is its name, travels higher than regular fireballs and thus is difficult to jump over. They also greatly complement his aforementioned ground-based Repuken. Rugal had also dropped his Kaiser Wave for a new super called Desperate Ray, another laser beam that is super fast and cover most of the screen, perfect tool against other zoners, not to mention that he still has his Dark Barrier Reflector. Rugal's new tools in KOF 15 make him an incredibly effective zoner to counter all zoners. Robert Garcia is the Shoto character archetype of KOF. He has fast fireballs, a reliable dragon punch, and overall excellent normals and command normals. That is, until he doesn't have those moves. Robert is probably the character who changes his fighting style the most in the series. In some installments, he just drops his long-ranged projectiles. In others, he uses his legs to throw them. And there are times when he uses both his arms and legs to throw fireballs on different levels of altitude. But the most known version of Robert is the one described in the beginning, the shorter one. There is one other alternative form that Robert has, the charge version, or Guile Robert as I like to call him. Seriously, he plays just like Guile under this form. His fireballs aren't just charge based, they also look like sonic booms. He also has a flash kick with the same motion input of course. However, he is a lot more mobile than Guile. His dive kick is fairly safe on block and requires only 3B motion in the air to come out. If you get too close to him, he has a scary move to punish you that acts like a command grab 
but is not really one. The said move ends with a launcher that can be followed with his aforementioned flash kick, or even worse, a new super that he acquired in this form. Needless to mention that he has his Hao Shokoken super in all his forms. A great way to punish other zoners from afar. I think that Robert's charge version is the most annoying to deal with. You tell me which version of Robert is the best, or the worst. Continuing with another charge character, Ash Crimson doesn't have a lot of moves in his repertoire, but what he has is more than enough to deal with pretty much any kind of situation, and most of the time from a safe distance. His fireballs, Ventos, work in a similar way to Geese's Repuken, and by that I mean that the light version comes out instantly, while the heavy version has a sort of delay that can trick the opponent. Unlike Geese, however, Ash's fireballs are not ground-based, and their sprites are kinda big. In other words, you're most likely going to be hit if you try to avoid them. Ash also throws two fireballs simultaneously in their EX alternative. He has a super effective flash kick to punish those careless jumps. Perhaps the most annoying tool he possesses is Genie, a small flame that acts like a trap. It remains idle in the stage and activates only when the opponent touches it. It's a very effective mean to force the opponent to stay in the corner or just prevent them from moving around freely. It's not worthy that Ash's ancestor, Psyche, has almost the same move list as Ash, in his human form I mean, only Psyche's moves are not charge based. So if you like Ash's moves but hate charge motions, you may want to consider giving Psyche a try. Here's everyone's favorite idol. Athena is one of the rare characters who never lost the use of her long-ranged fireballs. Even in 96, where most characters got their projectiles replaced with short-ranged ones, her psycho balls come out pretty fast and have a relatively big hitbox in some iterations. She also has an alternative projectile called Psycho Shoot. What makes it different is its longer startup animation and the ability to knock down and launch its target higher in the air, giving Athena a combo opportunity. Like other entries of this list, she has a reflector to deal with other zoners. In a lot of cases, it's difficult to get close to her. She has good air mobility thanks to her phoenix arrow and can easily run away from you with her teleport. Even if you somehow manage to close distance, you're still gonna have to deal with her command grab. Her only weak point is her DP, which is not the best in the series, but her super shining crystal bit gets her covered against any aerial attack, literally. But you know what makes Athena so annoying is her ability to break the fourth wall and directly threatens the player's eardrums. Case in point, K-Wave 98 Psycho Balls. She is so freaking loud and noisy in that game. The worst part is that she is a singer. She's supposed to have a nice voice. Shut up! One of the biggest absentees in KW15, Kensu is loved by his fans for his simple yet very effective playstyle centered around the use of his fast and reliable projectiles. Even though he's always been in the same team with Athena, the use of long-ranged fireballs is the only technique he shares with her. Unlike Athena, Kensu actually has a very strong DP. The best thing about it is how well it works with his projectiles. Kensu uses a quarter circle backwards to throw a fireball, and his DP is actually a reverse DP motion. That means when you're done with the fireball motion, you're already halfway in your DP motion. These moves just work so well together. But even if we put aside his DP, Kensu has super good sweeps. Rolling to avoid his projectiles is a bad idea. He will get you with his down D. It's a very simple and even lame playstyle, but it works. It's very hard to close distance with Kensu without getting hit, as long as he has his fireballs anyway, because in some iterations, he completely drops the use of projectiles and reinvents his playstyle. But that's a story for another video. There are two types of fireballs, the well-known mid-high projectiles that most characters utilize and can be snuck under with some moves like Mary Slicer or Yori Super, 
and ground-based fireballs that are effective against those moves but can be easily jumped over. And then there is Joe Higashi's Hurricane Upper, a borderline cheap move that combines the two aforementioned types. Most including supers, they are easily the biggest project size in this list, and as such, they are a real pain to avoid. What makes things even more unfair is the rest of Joe's moves. He plays mostly as a Shoto character, meaning if you think of jumping on him, his flash kick will be waiting for you, and he recovers from his fireball throw in animation faster than he looks, so much so that he can even have enough time to combo you with a slash kick from the end of the screen if one of his hurricanes hits you. But the worst part, or the best if you're a Joe player, is how the mechanics of KOA 15 made Joe a crazy good zoner and a top tier character. The fact that you can do EX moves without activating the max mod hugely played in Joe's favor particularly. His EX Hurricane Upper sees him throwing three fireballs in succession. And let me tell you, you are not avoiding that. There isn't much you can do against it but to take that chip damage. Joe might be a pretentious trash talker, he isn't just all talk. You all knew she's gonna be in this list for obvious reasons. King is among the first characters to come to mind when you mention zoners in KOF or fighting games in general. Her Venom strikes are undoubtedly the strongest asset that she has. They are very fast and you will need to learn how to deal with them if you want to defeat King. She can also throw two fireballs at once in their EX version or without any requirements in some installments to punish another zoner or a miscalculated role. In 15, she regained the ability to throw air fireballs and that alone is enough to make her one of the best and most annoying zoners in the game. Seriously, I play king and even I get annoyed by my own playstyle. <laughs> that just shows how effective and easy to use of a character she is. Let's not forget that beside her fireballs, King has many other tools to zone you out. Her tornado kick is perfect in mid-range and can be safe on block in some situations. Her trap shot, more specifically the EX version, is a good anti-air. But the scariest move she has in my opinion is her sliding kick or 3D. It's so easy to catch people off guard with it and there's a great combo starter to deal some painful damage. Plus, if it's blocked, you can still cancel it into her Venom Strike and you're still mostly safe. It all comes back to her fireballs after all, they're just that good. And they are the reason why she is pretty low tier in games where she lost them, or more precisely, lost their long range. Thankfully that version of King is gone and forgotten. Why did they make her fireball so lame in the first place? Getting destroyed by projectiles with names like Venom Strike or Hurricane Upper is one thing, but being harassed by a half-asleep kid who uses his pillows as fireballs, that is just humiliating. But it is gonna happen if you underestimate Mei Ten Kun, he is yet another charge character. However, his projectiles are motion based, he's kinda like Yurian from Street Fighter and although he may not look as intimidating, he is easily one of the most annoying characters in the series. Maiten's pillows move slowly, that means that he is most of the time free to move while his pillow is still active. Yep, he knows how to pressure his opponent. The heavy version of his projectiles travel diagonally from bottom to top, that means he can easily punish a reckless jump. Overall, jumping on May 10 is a very, very bad idea. It's the last thing you wanna do against him. A diagonal pillow could get you as I said, but there is a far worse scenario. Mei Chen Kun recovers from his fireball animation faster than he looks, and being a charge character, more often than not, he has enough time to charge his anti air Gekuho, which also acts as a launcher that can be followed with other devastating moves, including supers. So, a piece of advice think twice before jumping on him. It's tempting, especially when you're harassed non stop by his pillows, but don't fall into his trap. If his regular pillow is slow, the EX version is the total opposite. It's arguably the fastest projectile in the game, perfect to punish other zoners. Seriously, it works almost like a jump scare. 
Finally, he has decent air mobility as well, thanks to his racing Kyaku. In some situations, you might think you caught him doing a bad jump, but think again, it might be another trap. Who could have thought that the sleepy boy who is struggling to stay awake can be that much frustrating to fight? Before unveiling the number one spot, here's some honorable mentions. Who could top a troublesome little brat, but another troublesome little brat? Bao was the newcomer to Team Psycho Soldier in 99, but like many other fighters, his character didn't reach its full irritating potential until 2002 UM. I want to start with him by inviting you to take a look at his move list. 90% of these moves are fireballs. The amount of projectiles that Bao has is ridiculous. He has regular horizontal fireballs, slightly higher horizontal fireballs, bouncing fireballs, vertical fireballs, super fireballs, gravitational fireballs, and even human fireballs. It's not a joke, he can literally become a fireball himself. And I'm probably forgetting other variations, but to summarize, he has a type of fireball to deal with any kind of situation. He never has to get close if he doesn't want to. But even with all that, you would be wrong to think that projectiles is all what Bao possesses. He actually has a surprising good number of command moves on the ground and in the air, allowing him a huge deal of mobility. In addition, and that's probably his strongest asset in my opinion, his small stature makes it very hard to land a hit on him. He has such a small hitbox that a lot of attacks just pass over his head. What a little jerk. He is one of the most hated characters in O2UM, for a good reason. But of course, if he is your personal main, then he is the best thing ever. I wonder how he would fare against Mei Tain Kun if he was in 15. Maybe it's better if I never find out. I don't want to play against a team having these two brats in it. I value my sanity. Those were the 10 zoners that I find them to be the most infuriating to deal with. Which one of them is your personal bane? Or do you actually play them yourself? Share your answer with us in the comments. Special thanks to my patrons for their support. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. And why not consider subscribing to the channel? Thanks for watching.